history is in ceramics, in the field of ceramics, and um, I've met a lot of different bodies of work over the years. Um, I was a bit of a potter for a while, and made abstract sculptures for a while, and then in graduate school, I kind of refined this work. And actually, it was the it was the second figure symposium that I came to that uh, gave me all these ideas, and that was really the uh, jumping off point for my what I consider my mature body of work. Um, Elizabeth Higgins O'Connor was there, and I came to see the clay people, and uh, kind of didn't know anything about her. She had these just fantastic, huge monster dog things made out of fabric rag, and it really got my wheels turning. And um, so I moved on to making um, the ceramic heads, hands, and feet of, of the stuff, and then sewing the bodies along with that. And I use a lot of found objects in my sculptures as well. Totally wouldn't be making my work today if I had not attended that figure symposium. Coming out of seeing all these different types of work of fabric people and ceramic people and food people. And um, it really energized me and I can categorically say that I wouldn't be making the work that I made today or the caliber of it without that first trip there or not. Um, yeah, this place has been very influential in my career. So I came back as a, as a resident artist for 2016. I got to spend a year here making and being part of the family. Very intimate interaction with that, and on top of that, something about paramounts. When you come here, you may end up having a conversation with a wood turner or a fabric person or something. You kind of get out that myopic clay, clay, clay all the time, or wood, wood, wood all the time. And those ideas bouncing around and then at the end, all affect really valuable. Uh, makes paramount unique, I think, amongst the craft schools. I come from like a very rural family, like. Um, of my father's side, like my father, his father, his father before them. I'm the first male that's not built his own house. I was taught how to build houses by him, and my mother taught me how to sew and do things like that. So bringing all that stuff together in one piece is like the visual symbol of the influences. And then the clay uh, has come to represent me in that trifecta uh, for a lot of reasons. Like there's the wood that is hard and there's a the fabric that is soft and the clay can be both, right? It can be soft and hard at the same time. And that's where I kind of operate with that. And when I started making that way for the first time I can ever remember, like, I like every stage of this. Because before I like, had to stand for hours in front of the sand blaster or I'd stay up all night firing a kennel or load, try, chop wood or something like that. There was always some aspect that wasn't didn't get me excited, but I had to do. Um, and for the first time, like, I love everything. I love the sewing, I love the this, and I love the coloring, I love the making, and it's, clay work is only a third of it, right? And then there's a third of the studio time that's coloring it, and there's a third of the studio time that's, like, doing the sewing and the armatures and stuff like that, right? And so by the time that I get through all those stages, I'm excited to get back to the clay. And then I'm excited to get back to the sewing and just keep looping, but just can't wait to, for Monday morning to come, I'm like I should wait to get back to work, you know. But the first that was the first time it's ever happened to me, and I think like mm, that's that's it. Like this is true. And when you get excited about that, you're going to spend more time on it, and you're going to not dread it, and it's going to just going I think it's going to come out and work. That you're excited about every little aspect. You want to practice. Thumbs are hard, but you want to practice because you love it. You get better thumbs because you love practicing. You know. And then like I think that is pretty applicable to other disciplines also. The more you love it, the better you're going to get at it. I saw what Richard was doing and it uh, sparked an interest. So uh, for this class, it's the first time I've done torsos and hands and feet and um, I think I avoided doing the figure most of my life because I think I couldn't do it. And to my surprise, it's okay. <laughs> I'm doing something. But I also have to say that being the older people in the class. I mean, we're probably 40 years older than everybody else. And it's, you don't feel like it. It's just like they energize you, they interact with you. Everybody is friendly. It's, I mean, when we leave here, we're going to have 10 more friends if we want to come back. It's just, it's so amazing. that uh, It's like you're being adopted. You walk in the door and everybody's got their arms around you. Uh, the figure is very, can be very daunting. In a way, it's the oldest subject, right? It's been 
it's, it's been talked about and, and made sculptures of and paintings of more than anything else as the figure. And over the course of those years, it's been done very, very, very well. And I think that's what a lot of people see. They see a Van Eyck painting, right? That's just meticulously done and it's so foreign to them that they don't even know how to, just do not even get the first steps of doing that. I think you look at a, a de Kooning painting or something, which is like super rough marks, that breaks that down a little bit and they can see how that works. So it's really just about uh, taking the mystique out of it and coming to do something like this and like work with somebody that has a little more experience and they can break it down into the concepts and stages that are easily you can wrap your head around. Step one, step two, it just seems so easy. I never thought I could make a really nice looking hand until yesterday. <laughs> so. That's the benefit of having these classes instead of uh, presentations, you know, you can break it down into steps. When you break it down into steps, it's not that hard, it's not that intimidating. And it just takes seeing somebody do it in front of you, you know, to break that down, and it takes the mystery, the mystique out of the next leap for me, I think, is going to be stepping more into the textile aspect of that. Um, I actually have a loom and I know how to loom, but I'm not very good at it. And um, I kind of hope to come back and take a looming class here. And I want to start integrating in narratives within the fabric. So right now I'm using antique fabrics uh, that I find in stores or thrift shops that have been worn and I put that together. And I want to start carrying that narrative more uh, down into the body, into the very threads of the person. Um, and I think that I think that's going to be that's going to open a lot of possibilities to either juxtapose what's happening with the rest of the sculpture, or you know narratively support that a little bit deeper within the work. So that's I'm excited about that. Get me down.